I am going to prescribe a calcium channel blocker to treat your abnormal heart rhythm. Wait, a calcium channel blocker? I thought calcium was important since it helps the heart to start to beat and acts as a mediator in promoting the other cardiac cells to beat. Isn't it calcium's job to enter these cardiac cells and bind to the muscle fibers that trigger a contraction? Correct. However, calcium is tightly regulated. Any abnormality in calcium levels decreases the heart's ability to contract. This can result in heart failure. So, calcium channel blockers prevent calcium from entering the cells of the heart and blood vessel walls. This results in lower blood pressure. So calcium channel blockers should be taken with food or milk. And I also understand I can't have grapefruit or grapefruit juice while taking calcium channel blockers. If I do choose to have grapefruit juice, I should wait at least four hours after taking the medication. Is that correct? Correct. Side effects can include feeling tired, flushing, swelling of the stomach, ankles or feet and heartburn. But I read it can also cause weight gain. Correct. So call me right away should you experience this or breathing difficulties or any allergic reactions such as skin rash or hair loss. Now, although calcium channel blockers have similar mechanisms of action, they can differ in their ability to affect either my heart muscle or my arteries. And they can differ in the ability to affect heart rate and contraction. So how do you know which to prescribe? Great question. Remember, there are different classes of calcium channel blockers. Oh, so calcium channel blockers not only differ in their basic chemical structure, but they also differ in their relative selectivity towards cardiac versus vascular L-type calcium channels. Yes, as they bind to L-type channels located on the vascular smooth muscle and SA and VA nodes. These channels regulate the influx of calcium. Calcium channel blockers work by blocking voltage-gated calcium channels in cardiac muscle and blood vessels. In cardiac muscle, it reduces muscle contraction. And in blood vessels, the decrease of calcium results in decreased contraction of the vascular smooth muscle. There is an increase in arterial diameter which increases oxygen. So when you talk about the different types of calcium channel blockers, the smooth muscle selective class of calcium channel blockers are the dihydropyridines. And they are primarily used to reduce systemic vascular resistance and arterial pressure. These drugs end in pine, P-I-N-E. Yes, these smooth muscle selective class of calcium channel blockers treat hypertension. Do you remember the name of the class which have a stronger effect on the heart rather than the blood vessels? Oh yeah, the non-hydropyrodines such as verampamil have a stronger effect on the heart. These phenylalkylamines calcium channel blockers are relatively selective for the myocardium, which reduces myocardial oxygen demand. For example, verapamil is used to treat angina. Benzothiazepine calcium channel blockers are an intermediate class between the phenylalkylamines and the dihydropyrodines and their selectivity for vascular calcium channels. They have a cardiac depressant and vasodilator actions. Yes, like you said, they reduce the arterial pressure but without producing the same degree of reflex cardiac stimulation caused by the drugs ending in pine. Diltiazem is an example because it's able to reduce arterial pressure without producing the same degree of reflex cardiac stimulation. Calcium channel blockers are not the best initial treatment for high blood pressure. A diuretic is best for those with high blood pressure but no other heart problems. Calcium channel blockers are often used as a second or third drug to help lower blood pressure. They can be used as initial treatment if you have hypertension along with angina. Calcium channel blockers should not be taken by people with heart failure. Well, that would make sense because verampamil and diltiazem worsen heart failure because they reduce the ability of the heart to contract and pump blood. Correct. ACE inhibitors are the preferred treatment for those with heart failure. To recap, calcium channel blockers should be taken with food or milk. You should check your blood pressure regularly and pulse daily. Do not eat grapefruit or drink grapefruit juice and don't smoke. Smoking may cause a rapid heartbeat, tachycardia. The antidote for calcium channel blocker overdose is calcium. So, in a nutshell, the cardiac effects of calcium channel blockers is that they decrease contractility, decrease heart rate, and decrease conduction velocity. The vascular effects is that it causes smooth muscle relaxation or vasodilation. Thank you for watching our vignette on calcium channel blockers.